We've all heard it before. If you want to be healthy, you must drink eight glasses of water every single day. But what if I told you that the advice to drink eight glasses of water a day might be not only outdated, but actually misleading for a lot of people. And before we dive in, I want to hear from you. Yes, you. Drop a comment below and let me know where you're tuning in from. Whether you're in the windy city of Chicago or chilling beachside in Cali. Your environment actually plays a role in how much water you need. Let's compare climates and hydration needs in the comments. So in this video, I'm going to unpack the true origins of that eight glasses of day myth, break down why it doesn't apply to everyone, and more importantly, I'll show you how to personalize your hydration based on your weight, lifestyle, diet, environment, and overall health. And don't skip out early because I'm ending this with a list of hydration hacks that go way beyond just drinking water. All right, let's splash into this myth. Where did eight glasses a day even come from? Believe it or not, this number came from a 1945 US Food and Nutrition Board recommendation that said adults should consume about 2.5 liters of water per day. But here's what people didn't catch. It also said that most of that water comes from food. Yep, somehow that part got lost in translation. And now decades later, folks are walking around with gallon jugs like they're prepping for a water drinking contest. Here's a lesser known fact. Even dry looking food like bread and cooked meat contain water. In fact, the average person gets about 20 to 30% of their daily water intake from food. Eat an avocado, you're hydrating. Eggs, hydrating. Broccoli, that's basically nature's water balloon. Let's be honest, humans are not one size fits all. A six foot five, 300 pound strength trainer shouldn't be drinking the same amount as a 120 pound yoga instructor who teaches in an air conditioned studio. Your size, age, activity level, medications, climate, and even the type of food you eat all matter. And if you're on a carnivore or keto diet, you'll lose more sodium and water due to lower insulin levels. So your hydration needs jump. Here's another lesser known fact. When insulin drops, the kidneys dump sodium and water follow sodium. That's why low carb eaters often feel lightheaded, fatigued, or get the dreaded keto flu. They're not dehydrated, they're simply missing some salt. So the question is, how do you know how much to drink? Here's a simple starting point. Multiply your weight in pounds by 0.67. That gives you a rough target in ounces. Add 12 ounces for every 30 minutes of sweating or heavy activity. If you're in a hot or dry environment, bump that up. Sick with fever, vomiting, or diarrhea, increase your intake. Eating lots of hydrating foods or soups, you can ease up a bit. But here's the context. None of these numbers matter if you're not listening to your body. Here's another lesser known fact. Your thirst mechanism is actually regulated by the hypothalamus. And it's so sensitive that by the time you feel thirsty, you've already lost about one to 2% of your body's water. That may sound small, but that's enough to reduce cognitive performance, energy, or even blood pressure. Let's take a step back. Why is water so important? Water is involved in almost every biological process. It helps regulate body temperature, lubricates joints, protects your spinal cord, aids in digestion, supports detoxification, and as an obesity doctor, I've learned that it actually helps with fat loss. Yes, you heard that right. Drinking water helps burn fat. Here's how. It boosts metabolic rate, reduces appetite, and is required for the process of lipolysis which is how fat is broken down. Another lesser known fact. The first step of fat metabolism is called hydrolysis. That literally means breaking down fat with water. So if you're dehydrated, you're not just thirsty, you're slowing down your fat burning machine. All right, let's get practical. Here's how to hydrate smarter, not just harder. Number one, use the pee test. If your urine is dark yellow, you're likely dehydrated. Pale yellow, you're golden. Clear all the time, you might be overdoing it. Number two, add minerals to your water. A pinch of sea salt, a squeeze of lemon, or an electrolyte packet can help your body actually use the water you're drinking. Number three, start your day with water. After six to eight hours without fluid, your body's begging for hydration. Try 16 ounces of water before your coffee. Better yet, Make it warm water with salt and lemon. Although that can be very challenging because I like cold water as well. Number four, 
hydrate through food. This is especially helpful for those of you who are not the biggest fans of water. Think things like cucumbers, watermelon, tomatoes, lettuce, celery, strawberries, and bone broth. These are nature's hydration packets. Number five, customize your bottle. Get a water bottle you like, add time markers, set an alarm, or go old school, put a post-it on your fridge that says, hydrate, don't wait. Because if you're not accustomed to drinking water regularly, you need to use some of these approaches to adapt to new habits. Number six, don't guzzle, slip steadily. Your kidneys can only process about one liter per hour. More than that and you're just making your bladder work overtime. Number seven, replace what you lose. Sweaty workout, hot day, sauna, replenish. And don't just drink water, replace sodium and potassium too. Number eight, avoid fluids late at night, especially if you're over 40. Sleep is when your body heals and multiple bathroom trips can wreck that. Cut off liquids one to two hours before bed. Number nine, craving snacks. Drink first, your brain confuses thirst with hunger. Before you reach for a snack, try a glass of water. Number 10, track patterns, not perfection. Some days you'll need more, some less. Aim for awareness, not obsession. Here's my final lesser known fact. Cold water exits the stomach faster than warm water, which can be helpful post-workout. But sipping warm or room temperature water is often better for digestion and for those with sensitive stomachs. Here's my final thoughts. Hydration is important, but it's not about chasing a number. It's about tuning into your body, your lifestyle, your food, your activity level. That's the message I share with my patients every day in clinic. Your needs are unique. So instead of following an outdated rule from the 1940s, let's listen to the most brilliant machine ever made, your body. And for those of you who have made it to this point in the video and this video has shifted your mindset around hydration, do me a favor, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and share this with someone who's still carrying around a gallon jug thinking that's the only way to be healthy. And remember, real hydration isn't about drinking more, it's about absorbing more, holding more and using it wisely. Stay hydrated, stay informed, and I'll see you in the next one.